Illinois yesterday advancing to the Sweet 16 before the game. Their most famous fan, Team Chaplain Sister Jean, delivered a team prayer that could also have been a stellar game plan. I believe in the power of prayer, y'all. Here it is. As we play the Fighting Illini, we ask for special help to overcome this team and get a great win, she said. We hope to score early, make our opponents nervous. We have a great opportunity to convert rebounds as this team makes about 50% of layups and 30% of its three points. Our defense can take care of that. I love this woman. Let's welcome in Loyal Chicago's head coach, Porter Moser, to the show. Now, Coach Moser, quite a prayer, um, but quite a game plan. I mean, how similar was yours to Sister Jean? She knows her stuff. No, I know. Sometimes, sister, we got the game clock starting to run. Her prayers sometimes are like three minutes. She, she's very detail oriented, but she's been part of who we are. And, and the, you know, her, she's always, um, she's really sharp for, for being her age. And we get an email after every game. And uh, no, but that's, she's a big part of who we are. Coach Mose, congratulations. Good to see you again. Uh, I, I got to ask this question, though, because uh, obviously prayers are incredibly important. But so is defense. And I think that Thank what's you. flown under the radar is the fact that you guys got the number one defense in the nation. Nobody has talked about that. Coming into this game against the Fighting Illini, what were your expectations? What, what, what were you looking for? What were you worried most about when it came to this team? Transition defense. Stephen A, they're, they're elite at going downhill off ball screens and downhill in transition. And so we really wanted to just make a wall in transition. And then we really wanted to bottle up their ball screens because, you know, IO is an All-American, but Frazier, Corbello, they got some phenomenal guards that can go downhill. And that was a, a big thing of it. And it's interesting you said defense, too, because we've been one of the top defensive teams. And we've kind of parlayed what you guys talk about in the NBA. To the, the two-way players because sometimes in college when you're recruiting you're saying oh defense defense now it's kind of a buzz where we we talk about hey be a two-way player michael kobe Kwai, clay thompson two-way yeah. players and i think that's something we really sold in the recruiting process and our guys believe in the length and switching of being a two-way player yeah, those are the best players in the game that's right coach how valuable is it and what kind of contribution do seniors who have been in a Final Four make to this team? What difference does it make? It's huge. So we have, we have two players that are only only two from that team. So that's pretty cool how we've been able to sustain this. But those two are two big guys, Cameron Krubig and Lucas Williamson. And here's where it's important. We won the Missouri Valley Championship two weeks ago, and we cut down the nets. We celebrated. All the young guys were going crazy because we're going to the NCAA tournament. After about an hour of celebration, we get back to the locker room, and the two old seniors are like, you guys, this is great, but it gets way better from here. We lock in, this it gets way better. And when, you know, when a coach says that, it's one thing. But when you got players saying that message in the locker room, it, it, it carries a lot more weight. And Crut and Lucas are great leaders that were with us on the Final Four run. Coach Mose, one of the things that I don't want to allow folks to do, I know that this year has been incredibly difficult from the standpoint of COVID-19 and some of the complications that it has caused, uh, and it's ravaged the world of sports. We get that. But what I'm trying to make sure everybody understands, this has been a phenomenal weekend of college basketball. And it's like, I don't think this is happening because of COVID-19. I don't think this is happening because we don't see the blue bloods like Duke or Kentucky in the mix. I think this is happening because I think there's some parity that's really elevating and proliferating in the world of college basketball. Can you speak to that at all, sir? Yeah, amen, Stephen. I think there's been some great basketball here. And what it, what it is also is with the pandemic, a lot of these teams that had freshmen and young guys, I found it with mine. You're about four or five months behind in development with those guys because you didn't get them. And you're seeing some older veteran teams, some older players um, that, that allows the parity, that allows some teams that were older and, um, and had some experience that maybe that this year they're, they're, they're rising to the top. And I, I think there's a lot of parity in college basketball right now. But to speak to the, how awesome this is, I know we're in a bubble and I know we can't have full capacity, but there's still such an energy at the games. I mean, your promo coming in before, uh, it was uh, like 20 minutes ago, that was my kids. <laughs> that was my boys with their arms up. They haven't been to a game all year. They, Loyal had no games. So just the excitement for the fans here, March Madness, it's been really cool to see the, the buzz. And for us at Loyola, to have an in-state game like that against two ranked teams in our state, a lot of buzz in Chicago, and it, it's fun for the sport of college basketball. Coach, you mentioned how Krutwig makes contributions as a senior and to keep the team steady. And 
as not just not to mention on the court, by the way, um, as a coach, how do you now approach your next game? You're in the Sweet 16. You are now the higher seeded team. Mm -hmm. You, you're, you're the better-seeded team heading into this game, coming off a monster upset against the number one. How do you avoid the kind of, you know, like you don't have that same kind of underdog thing going now into the next round? Same as we always do. We got a process. We got a process of a, a confident preparation. We, 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 we have a respectful prep for everybody. We take one game at a time with that. But, you know, we always feel like we're chasing. You know, we'll, you know whether it's an exhibition game against a Division II team, we just got this mentality we're constantly chasing. And, you know, we played the ACC tournament champs in game one. We have the Big Ten tournament champs in game two. Now we got the Pac-10 tournament champs in game three. So we got three power five you know, tournament championships are hot. So we frame it that way. And we're the Missouri Valley Conference champs. So we feel like we're hot. So I just think this mentality in the locker room of always chasing, chasing, and taking one game at a time, we don't think about underdog or uh, being favored or underdogs. It's just we're chasing what we want. And that's a national championship. To piggyback off of what Max brought up, I mean, this ain't your first rodeo. You guys were in the Final Four three years ago or so. I'm wondering how much does that play? How much do you believe that will help you in the next few days in preparation of what's to come this next week in the so? The experience that you already have, can you speak to that? Yes, and I, I went to Boston to visit with Brad Stevens um, after our first Final Four run, and we sat there and talked because I wanted to pick his brain about Butler, like going back a second time. And he said he felt it. It was so hard that season um, of just the pressure and everything. But once you got in, people recognized the name. They knew you could win. They knew you could advance. They knew you could upset them. And that became a factor, and your guys play more loose. And I felt that. Sometimes when you're in a league where it really comes down to that conference tournament to get that bid, and it's, it's, there's a lot of pressure. And then once you get into the tournament, you got some confidence. You can play loose, shoot loose. And um, I think that's the way we're at. I think at Loyola, we've been there. Um, we're here again. And I think our guys are, are loose. I mean, we're respectful of confidence. Yeah, really making a name for the school. And that's a very interesting story about reaching out to Brad Stevens. Let me ask you this, Coach, real hard-hitting question here. But during the game, they mentioned everyone's kind of fallen in love with Cameron Crutwig and his personality. Does he really play a mean harmonica? Or was that just talk? No, he plays. He's an old school guy. He's an old school guy. He'll sing. He'll play. Um, he's he's he does it all. He's just a wonderful kid. I my mentor that I coached with, Rick Majerus, would have loved him because he always wanted to know if the big man. The first question he always asked me said, "Porter, when he recruited a big man, does he love basketball? Crut loves basketball. The kid's a, a and he loves life. And he's just a fun kid to coach. He's a heck of a player. Doesn't pass the eye test all the time, but he I have him on my team anytime. He's a great player." Yeah, seems like it. Fun to watch. All right, best of luck uh, against Oregon State. Thank you so much for the time, and huge congrats, congrats on the major upset to get things started. For sure. Thanks for being with Thank us. Thank you, guys. Coach. Thanks for having me. All right, take care. Of course. To the NFL, wait till you hear which team the fellas think is winning the NFC East now. Uh, this one's going to be fun. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. Kawhi Leonard, your guy, the guy that's the best player in the world, Stephen A. That dude, Kawhi Leonard, who led the Clippers. That's right, go hide, Max. Wait a minute, let me put an APB out for Max Kellerman. Where the hell is he? That's what you should have did after they lost Game Seven. <laughs>